Remember NASCAR Heat 2? Yeah, neither do I. I'm kind of like the real-life Dale Earnhardt Jr., taking sabbaticals, long sabbaticals, and then coming back, and then maybe I won't be back, but I probably will be back, but maybe not. I'll maybe talk for NBC or something. Anyway, we're here at Kentucky. We've probably got something like 25 rivals at this point in the career mode, and we need to somehow try to continue in the chase, though I think we have enough wins that we won't really have to worry about getting knocked out of that, but them playoff points are always important, so let's qualify. So has my time off changed anything about my driving and qualifying pace? Probably not. Well, 30th. Uh, that's usually where I qualified, isn't it? Yeah, I had a big understeer in turn three. It probably could have been about two to three to four second, or uh, seconds. That would have been great. Uh, tenths quicker, but yeah, I pushed in turn three, and that was all she wrote. So let's go over to PRN, get us started here in Kentucky, and then see how I can work my way up to the field and try to take on flying Ryan Newman at the front. This week, the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series is at Kentucky Speedway for the Quaker State 400, presented by Advance Auto Parts. This track is nestled in college basketball country, but these fans also love their racing. Now, last year, Brad Keselowski thought he ran out of fuel near the end of the race, but he had just enough left in the tank to hold off Carl Edwards. Will we see another fantastic finish here in the Bluegrass State? We're just moments away from the green flag. It's also nestled deep in the heart of Ashley Judd country. Remember Ashley Judd? Anyway, we're underway here at Kentucky, racing. And it's kind of weird to hear a Carl Edwards mention. In 2018, we're not talking about, hey, remember they Carl Edwards? Ready. But anyway, we're working around the outside of Stenhouse Jr., who's directly behind Danica Patrick, and I don't need to say any more about that. So we go up the track here, get pushed into the wall by Danica. She's probably a rival, not really a shocker. As T. Bain very loose into turn three, we're going to just hold station behind him, I think. Maybe. He's going to go really slow. And we're going to be three wide all the way through the field, down through the tri-oval. 18 to go in stage one, so pretty pretty long stage, even though I'm trying to make it short by running into the wall. Four wide, sure, why not? Around both of the Roush boys. Really bullied Trevor Bain a little bit there. Really bullying Stenhouse as well. Roush Racing just not going to be particularly all that happy with me. Somebody's spinning on the inside. It was Trevor Bain. After making that contact there, we're loose, we're loose, we're loose off of turn four. And was that David Reagan being a rival? Regardless, there's a huge spin. I saved it. I saved it, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, Do I stay out or do I pit? I, I feel like... Uh, is anyone else pitting? How much more time do I have? 15 seconds. Let's pit foreign fuel, get out there, repair the car, and try to fuel mileage into a stage win, because that's always fun to do, isn't it? Okay. Jeffrey Earnhardt down to the inside, just in front is DJ Kennington. We're underway once again with five laps completed in stage number one. 14 to go. 15 on the fuel. That's exactly what I needed to do. Now I just need to essentially stay out and hope there's not a caution. But look at these fresh tires on the outside, working around all the traffic. Heading down the back straightaway, going to ride up against the wall, trying not to make any rivals cheesed off at me too early on in this thing. We've already kind of done that already. Car really handling well on these fresh tires. Really, really handling well. A little bit of contact with Casey. Oh, I almost said Casey Mears. That's not Casey Mears. I... It's, uh, it's a spinning Ty Dillon. Karma. Karma. <sighs> Welcome back to the NASCAR Heat 2, everybody. <laughs> that was a very NASCAR Heat 2 thing to happen right there. Okay, well, we know the outside can be a good thing, but I can also hit the outside wall, lose momentum, and be run over by a rival. So let's try to get back racing once again here. And hopefully not have too many issues. As we go back to the green, Corey LaJoy already, already got me loose. That was pretty quick. Okay, fresh tires once again on the outside. There's David Reagan who started the crash. The last 
or the first time as I give DJ Kennington a very nice shove into turn number three, working around the outside, just trying to get in the gas kind of early. And working my way through the field quite nicely, so that's much better. So much better restart than the last one. Get shoved in the outside wall, David. Hope they give you room. They do. Absolutely running a Larson line again around the outside of McDowell and Busher and Danica. Maybe Danica's there down to the inside, and now we'll pass her. Lifting off the gas in turn three. Driving around the outside of Blaney. We were four wide for a second. Blaney thought better of it. Probably a good idea. And almost broken up into the top half of the field already in just a couple of laps. We'll see if they have to pit. Well, it's not going to matter because I decided to slam the wall. But it doesn't matter because I'm going to get a huge run on the outside. And got wrecked. Yellow Yep. Well, this, uh, welcome back to NASCAR Heat. I've already said that, but welcome back to NASCAR Heat, too. Okay, we're going to tighten the car up a little bit. So hopefully that doesn't happen again. Though I suspect it will. Though I suspect it will. Here we go. Almost ready. Just as long okay. as Cole Witt, I think I'm cool with Cole Witt. So as long as he doesn't box me out here, I think we're going to be all right heading into turn one. And then I think I can get a good run on the outside. So we've got five laps to go in stage number one already a crash field stage one here and working around the outside four wide action kind of slammed the wall just a little bit it's all good just trying to stay away from Corey LaJoy we know he's easily aggravated so still work the top groove getting a really good run around the outside of a lot of cars including Jeffrey Earnhardt who's been one of my rivals since pretty much day one in this uh, friggin' series. And <laughs> just uh, using the cushion a little bit up there, up top, running into the wall. That's what I'm calling a cushion. It's the David cushion. And Michael McDowell. Whoa, look out. Well, <laughs> Trevor Bain up and over. Yeah, it seems like cars get spun to the inside really easily on this track, and then chaos ensues. So, everybody's pitting, because of course they are, but I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm going to tighten the car up one more time. But, since I wasn't technically involved in the crash before it went yellow, I get to keep my spot, which is a good thing. So, restarting 36th actually means maybe we won't completely get run over here on the restart. But then again, we'll see. It's on the outside. We're going to work this line again. Hope everybody slows each other up just enough that I can just kind of fall in the line behind Almadair. Try to get her going here. Down and behind AJ. Big run. Three wide. Oh man, Almendinger was loose. He put me into his teammate. I saved it. Cody Ware probably is not going to save it. Why did Michael McDowell just slam into me? There's another yellow, courtesy Michael McDowell. And since I've got enough or a little damage, or little enough damage that I don't have to worry about being slow because of it, or certainly not because of the damage, we're just going to stay out and go for it. So back to racing once again here in stage two with 16 to go. Yeah, shifting up, I need to remember to do that. Never mind. Dailed into the wall. Okay. Thanks, Sadler. Wow. <laughs> Not even a turn. Not even a turn before I got turned into the wall. I mean, it wasn't even, it wasn't even close that that was going to happen. This is a crash-filled race, everybody. I don't think we've had a real extended green flag run in this whole thing yet. Let's try to do that, shall we? Up to speed one more time. Through the gears. To the outside. All right, good big move on the outside. Try to just stay on the wall so Ty Dillon doesn't spin me out. Look at the damage on David Reagan's car. Front end all torn up on that one. And to the outside we go. 
a run on Busher here. They're three wide, or I am three wide on the outside. Now they're three wide out in front of me with Sadler. He decided to try to kill me on the last run. So we'll try to get around him as quickly as possible, which I was able to do. All right, a little bit of open space down here, down the back straightaway. Very, very fast into turn number three. Keep the car just sliding just a little bit on the outside. Drafting behind Ryan Blaney and Casey Kane. Big run, 191 miles an hour down here into turn one. Lift off the gas. Get the car sliding just a little bit through the corner. On the outside of McFlurry. McFlurry's not going to be nice, so I'm just going to steer into him. Just going to steer into him. Uh-oh. Hi, McFlurry. And a caution, because of course there is. But hey, you know what? I wasn't involved in the wreck, so I get to keep going. And that's what we're going to do. I was involved in the wreck. But the game didn't know I was involved in the wreck, because I didn't spin out. Therefore, I fooled the game, so they didn't put me at the back. Ha! Take that game, and we are underway once again. Landon Castle just out in front, working to the outside of him as we come up through the years. And into turn one, the field nice and bunched up here. I tried to take advantage of it by sneaking to the outside. Didn't quite work, so we'll get in behind Suarez here. Try to break up into the top 20 for hopefully the first time today as I give Suarez a little bit of a bump draft into turn three. He sneaks underneath. Austin Dillon, and Austin Dillon will come down into me because he was way out of the groove there. And was clearly not having it because he was trying to steer into that the entire way down the corner, but couldn't quite get down to the bottom with six laps to go in the stage. Just going to keep driving around the outside as we've got three cars underneath, or two cars underneath, three wide. The Benedetto was nice to me because Purple Car Powers... Love me some purple cars. Thank you to Benedetto for being nice. And now we're on the outside of Vomitinger and Blaney. Well, Blaney's still working tough on the inside. And almost moves in front of me. That was close. Big draft as we hit the halfway point in the race. And catching the wall a lot. And losing positions. I was in the top 20 for just a brief second. The briefest fleeting moment I was in the top 20. And that's much better. Around the outside. Trying to do a bit of a ring around the rosy thing. We are four wide, actually, technically, with Suarez all the way down there. And Stenhouse and Almendinger alongside of him. Four to go. Driving all the way around the outside. Trying to get to the outside of Kenseth. I almost called him Jones, but we're not in the 2018 update. Side draft off of Kenseth who is now back in the series, of course, so that's something that happened between uh, now and then. The last time I did this uh, series, and now, as we've got three laps to go in stage number two, now finally the field is spread out enough for me to actually really start moving towards the front of the field. A nice clean pass of Menard here, heading towards the front. Will I have enough Time to get up with some stage points, though. We'll see. So the front end washes out just a little bit. Clint Boyer just ahead of me. Going to give a big toe down the main straightaway here, or he's going to give me a big toe. Third or two laps to go here. In stage number two, diving up behind Clint Boyer and in behind Almarola. To the outside, car wagging a tail a little bit. Still there. Crossing the line, one to go. Why was Clint Boyer? Is Clint Boyer having a tri tire trouble? I think he is. He's going to lose it. Yep, into the wall goes Clint Boyer. In the rearview mirror, Clint Boyer hit the wall. So is this going to bring out the caution? Looks like maybe some cars are running out on the bottom. Can we get into the top ten? I don't know. Clear, clear. Well, we'll wreck Logano for 11th. Bye, Joey. 
Nope, because Almirola, the Smithfield, is going to sneak on by on the inside. We'll take 12th in the stage. Not too bad, not too bad. Certainly a better stage than the previous one, for sure. And we'll get into the pits, get everything squared away. Car feeling good, so we'll stick with this for now. 12th place on the outside lane. Ready to go here. Eric Jones just in front. Back to racing, bringing the car up to speed. Got Kyle Larson Senpai out in front. 25 laps to go in this one. So still a long, long way to go. There's a three wide. Thought about making it four there. Oh, car very loose off of the corner. It was absolutely ping-ponged between Larson and Almirola there, and I'm not sure how I didn't lose it. That car was evil in between traffic there, but it's okay. It's okay. We're up to ninth now with 24 laps to go. And can I pass the 24 car with 24 laps to go? I think we will. Guidance Counselor Brad working tough on the outside. We're going to fight with him down the back straightaway. Try not to wreck him here in turn three. That would be a bit unfortunate. Easy. Hold your line. And rim riding the outside of the track. Oh, Elliot moves up line. the track just a little bit. That's my teammate, of course. We can't pass him. Because old Mr. H will be mad because Napa will be mad. But oh well, Nationwide is on your side, and uh, that side is the outside, and that's the side that I passed Chase Elliott on. Trying to work to the outside, Denny Hamlin's not quite working out. There we go, on the throttle. Pulling off of turn four nice and easy, but not quite able to get to the outside of Denny. Certainly the front of the field much more difficult to pass than the uh, back of the field, as you'd kind of expect. But really getting a good run through turn one where I'll drive around the outside of Hamlin and the outside of Kurt Busch. Side by side down the back straight away. Lifting off the throttle through the center. On the throttle once again. Keselowski holding tough on the inside as is Kurt Busch. So we'll get into line here. Try to use these guys to pull me up into this very tough looking group of guys up here who are racing absolutely tooth and nail. It's the pole sitter Newman, Jimmy the Juggernaut Johnson, stage winner Martin Truex Jr. and the most boring winner ever, Kevin Harvick. Stay high. Stay so let's get three wide between guidance counselor Brad and Martin Truex Jr. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. That was a little bit of contact right there. Big draft off of Jimmy the Juggernaut. Well, we, we dispatched of Truex. Barely. But haven't really been able to challenge the rest of the field as I rim right around the outside of Kentucky Speedway. And now gonna be able to pass guidance counselor Brad. Can I get Jimmy the juggernaut down here into turn three? I think I will because I'm on the inside line for like the first time this entire race. And look at the car work on the bottom there. Able to get around Jimmy and now battling with Numa Numa and Harvick. 19 to go. Arcing the car wide into turn one. Newman pushes up. We're going to go three wide. Yes, we are. For the lead, three wide. Down to the inside. Down the back straightaway. Oh, boy. Is this going to work out well in turn three? Yes, it is. Wow. And Harvey got pushed way wide. He loses a ton of positions. And Kazalowski moves into second. And he might be moving into first real quick here. He's getting a big toe behind me. So dive down right next to the yellow line off of the throttle. Trying not to use too much of that apron there. I kind of caught it just a little bit. Kozlowski's still looking, still looking behind. Diving the car down into turns three and four on the throttle. Try to get a good drive off. Which I didn't really maybe get. No, it's all right. It's all right. It's a good corner exit. With 17 laps to go. Kozlowski still looking all over the back of me. Probably going to be coming to the check or uh, coming to the end of the fuel run with about probably 11 laps to go. I'd say, yep, exactly. Seven to go in the tank. 
and really starting to pull out a gap now. I think Keselowski kind of got uh, some dirty air, I guess you could say, in turns one and two, pushed up the track a little bit, and that may be curtains for Kez, at least at this point. So I crossed the line with 16 to go in the fuel, six laps. So there you go. That's the status of the fuel along with the laps remaining in the race. So continue to build a gap on Keselowski, almost a full second now. Car really coming alive late in this stint. Right down next to the yellow line, still trying to just pull away ever so slightly yellow from... Ah, oh, That's not what I wanted to see. So the green flag pit stop goes out the window. That's for sure. Do I need any repairs? No, I don't. Now, are they going to take tires? They generally don't, which they didn't. So I'm back to 14. But I've got fresh tires for the end of the race, and they don't. So it's going to be a fight to the finish here at Kentucky. Getting in behind Eric Jones. Working to the outside, trying to get it going here. And around the outside, around the outside, around the outside of several cars. And Blaney's going to bully me down the back straightaway. And making a move on the outside once again, Chase Elliott diving in behind him. Whoa, and Larson gives Elliott the, uh, whoa, sorry Chase, oh boy. Well, there goes that win. <laughs> there goes that win. I don't know if I can get 39 positions here the next couple of laps. Looks like Clint Boyer was actually eliminated in that crash at the end of the last stage. Well, back to racing we go. I do not want to be on the inside, but it looks like I may be stuck down here. Unless I can get Timmy Hill out of the way here. Get out of the way, Timmy. Get out of the way, Timmy. This is why I have rivals in the back of the field, because I just shoved both of those guys out of the way. DJ Kennington and Joey Gase, but oh well. To make do with what we've got as I'm working around the outside again. Car pushing up. Couldn't get the run I wanted to. Down the main straightaway, seven to go. Seven laps. Can I get 38 positions in seven laps? That seems fairly unlikely, but we're going to try for it. I'm going to try for it. Look at that run off of turn two, just carrying so much more speed than the rest of the field right now. As they are mired in traffic, kind of on their own little lines, and I'm kind of running completely a different racetrack than the rest of them, for the most part anyway. Get on the main straightaway here, six to go. Six laps to go. Still working around the outside. Almost up into that top 20 once again. Going to be getting there, I think, by turn three because, man, this car is hooked up. It's really hooked up right now. It's exactly what we kind of need, to be honest with you, right now. Low, low. 20th place, made a little bit of contact with five Castle there. Five to go. Suarez really getting a good run on the inside. And working to the outside, a couple of Hendrick Racing teammates right there, but certainly Chase Elliott may not be particularly enthusiastic about me anymore after that unfortunately incidental contact You're with him. Here. I think I got hit by like Hamlin or somebody that put me up into him. Just kind of unfortunate that it was Chase who got caught out by it. But anyway, we've got four laps to go here. We're up to 17th. Uh, pushed the envelope too hard in turn one. I thought I was probably going in there. I, I was almost on the rev limiter into turn one. I got such a great draft off of Paul Menard. But as kind of typical, the thing didn't quite stick in the corner. As Chase works his way down to the inside, he's trying to get around. Not quite. To the outside of Paul Menard with three laps to go. 
The only way I can really get a shot at this, I think, is if the yellow comes out and there's a green-white checker or something. Oh, there, well, there you go. There you go. Yeah, we're going to get a shot at it, I think. Yeah, okay. Well, do not pit. I didn't really mean to wreck Logano in the same place as I wrecked him before, but well, we might get a win out of this. We'll see. The problem is I'm starting on the inside. That's not the best place to start. Especially with all them rivals I've got. But at least I've been nice to Kenseth, so he's nice to me. And we work the bottom. Get a good run down the back straightaway. Big run, big run. Clear, clear. Outside move. No, Kenseth is going to cross over, take that one back. So we're going to get one lap to go here. Presented by Credit One Bank with uh, not really good opportunity to win this thing unless Hamlin and Johnson crash, which they're trying to do up there. And I tried to take advantage of it, and the car just didn't uh, want to do that. So I'm going to work off here into turn three. Let's see how many positions I can gain right here. Back the corner up on the throttle. Nope, oh, it's pushing. It's pushing. And Kenseth will make a move down to the inside. Looks like it's going to be 16th for the Dale Mobile. Yep, that's that's what I think, Spotter, too. Well, it was a 16th uh, place effort today. That is painfully average in NASCAR racing. Clint Boyer was the only retirement of the race after his crash directly behind me. And stage winner Martin Truex Jr. takes the victory. Not really a shock there. Let's take a look at the points. Well, we'll take a look at the money first. That's technically points in this game because it doesn't mean anything. And we'll wait up to 13 million, almost at the 14 million mark. We're second in the points behind Kyle Busch. But we have more wins and thus more playoff points than he could ever hope to dream of. So let's head back and see how much trash has been talked about us on social media. So, yeah, the uh, incentive contract, as usual, is not going to get filled out, and nobody's talking trash. So we'll just head on to the next race, which is Sunday at New Hampshire, the Overtons, 301. Yeah, New Hampshire, uh, a track that people say isn't a short track, but it's definitely a short track, but we won't get into that argument. It's going to be probably an absolute bloodbath in terms of rivals, so that should be exciting. Hope to see you there. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube. If you enjoy this video, enjoy NASCAR Heat 2. Be sure to hit the like button on it. Let me know down in the comments how happy you are it came back or maybe how angry you are it came back. And we'll see you in the next video.